spent a lot of time over the last year really working on a diversity and inclusion agenda. Well, you're an idiot then, mate. No two ways about it. What you need to spend time on, mate, is looking after aircraft and making sure passengers get to their destination after they pay to do so. How much more can it go woke? It can't go any more woke than what it is right now. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to Fast Jet Performance then. My name is Tim Davies and for 20 years then I flew Fast Jets in His Majesty's Royal Air Force and now I tend to spend more time outside of it fighting against very poor diversity and inclusivity aspects and one of the things we're going to look at today is how this is starting to infiltrate very deeply within our core services not only the Royal Navy we'll look at but also air traffic control and things that you probably use on a daily basis we're going to end this as well by having a look at some civilian examples but more so looking at the difference between complex and complicated systems because if we don't grip this early guys if we don't really attach ourselves to this problem and get rid of it then we're going to find ourselves in a, an area that we cannot come out of and that that could be exceptionally detrimental for every single one of us okay i've made myself a little bit smaller then look navy personnel told to introduce themselves with pronouns in trans guidance this stuff is bollocks arguing against this the whole time this is the royal navy we're talking about now his majesty's royal navy let's have a look at it in essence the royal navy personnel have been told to introduce themselves with their pronouns before meetings in official guidance seen by the telegraph introducing yourself with your pronouns at the start of meetings and interactions is a good way to be inclusive. You couldn't make this bullshit up, could you? I mean, you genuinely could not make this up. It then goes into some made-up words, of course, because we're in a, a make-believe land now, so we have to use made-up stuff with people with mental health conditions, probably. I'm absolutely fed up with this stuff. I don't know whether that's coming across in this video, but it might well be. The Royal Naval officers are told to brief sailors on white privilege and intersectionality. Now, this affected member under General Miley, the officer in the United States military. He Remember, he was talking about white rage, investigating white rage. We're going to have a look at that sort of thing in a second, very briefly. If you're white, whatever situation you're in, it is almost always the case that the outcome has not been affected by your skin colour. Uh, there's this stuff... Now, Lord West here... He, he actually does say some sensible things here uh, about uh, his surprise that the Navy wishes to try and divide a ship's company by focusing on people's gender uh, rather than seeing them all as one company. We need to start thinking about this as the intent. That's what people aren't doing. I want you to sit there and go, right, if this was happening intentionally, right, if immigration coming to the UK was intentional, if this diversity aspect was intentional, who's doing it? Why are they doing it? What's the big picture? And we're going to move into that a little bit later if we can, okay? But I think it's exceptionally dangerous. Let's not do too much more on this because it does annoy me a little bit. But I will just say Stonewall, the absolute idiots, are obviously in this as well. Now, I argued with the Air Force for a long time about Stonewall. They didn't listen to what I said and they ended up having to pay money to young white men who didn't get in. And we'll have a look at that in a second as well. Air traffic control told to abandon woke diversity schemes and focus on the job. I'm not a fan of our current conservative government because they are not a conservative government. I'm a conservative man with a massive C, all right? But I'm still a little bit of a libertarian and everything else as well. Don't get me wrong. I'm a bit of a confused cat, all right? If you want to tell me your political beliefs or whether you think I'm right or wrong in the comments, that's what they're there for. But look, this is air traffic control. There is no place in here for um, pushing a diversity agenda. Save that to B&Q if you want to. Save that to the post office. It doesn't matter. But look, MPs demand air traffic controller spend more time dealing with passenger service and safety and less pontificating about identity politics. It's told to get its head out of the clouds and abandon the woke diversity agenda unconscious bias training which was scrapped by the civil service because there's no evidence to prove it actually works if anything it does the opposite it, it, it really gets people kind of worked up we need to get rid of this idea of white privilege in a overly indigenous white population as a country of course you're going to get a pushback anglo-saxons don't tolerate this very well i'm talking about the whole of northern europe at this point we're going to see some pushback if we're not careful within the next five years most definitely but look, leading the diversity drive is this chap here. Diversity and inclusion is the right thing to do. Now, it wasn't the right thing to do, of course, 10 years ago, but it is now for some reason. And that's because it's the latest bandwagon everyone's jumping on. We know that, don't we? So we spent a lot of time over the last year really working on a diversity and inclusion agenda. Well, you're an idiot then, mate. No two ways about it. What you need to spend time on, mate, is looking after aircraft and making sure passengers get to their destination after they pay to do so. This is the main problem. This is the problem here. People like this are recruited very early on, such as Mike Wigston was also, I believe, personally, in order to serve an agenda of, with nefarious, nefarious intent. Okay, very poor intent. And we're going to have a look at that in a second. Look, how we review CVs, how we review candidates, how we look at things in a way that isn't unconsciously biased to what we've seen before. Basically, they're going to recruit more people of minorities and less people of white. That's what they're going to do. We know it's 
true. And it's saying that it's kind of, here we go, a latest graduate intake to their traffic service has been 58% female it has partnered with a youth organization named fantasy wings uh, i think i've spoken about fantasy wings and the problems with them as well black asian minority ethnic young people are platformed to enter and excel in the aviation industry so not only do they not include white people within that which some people would say the big r word wouldn't they but also you're not allowed to have well i couldn't start something saying no there's no minorities allowed in my uh, in my thing mate so um i've got a platform to only allow white people to enter aviation you can't do it and because of that you should not be allowed to do that either that's not inclusive remember these people want to be inclusive but they don't want to be inclusive of everyone they don't want to be inclusive of the the young white man do we and i'll show you how that backfired in a minute can we just agree please the rest of this is bollocks and then we can move on i'm just telling you now there's some horrendous stuff in here i'll put the links to these awful articles down here if you want and then we can just move on with something hopefully sensible no we can't because now we're talking about the united states air force and this is even worse than our air force if i remember correctly what's pretty much happening here is that they are going to reach out and try and bring more minorities into the air force and uh, in order to do so they've actually got to get rid of a lot of white officers i, I can't remember the exact figures i think it was like 5400 it was a significant amount this article goes into it but in effect what it's saying is they're trying to balance their air force exactly the same as the demographic of the country which is a absolutely nonsensical thing to do i can understand why people think well it's quite sensible to him because then actually what we can do is we can make up police forces because you police by consent yes not air forces it's ridiculous again this whole article basically says this is a ridiculous article with an exceptionally racist policy that I personally don't want anything to do with. This man now has overtaken uh, General Marley to be the most senior uh, man in the US military and I, I think well, should, should we leave it? This is the thing about the problem with white men. You know, I put up, I went up against this and uh, I did a whole series of videos. If you go back in my content to see this, young white men were being discriminated against on entry to the Royal Air Force. Why? Because they were white. That was it. They were white. There was no other reason. Oh, apart from the fact they were men. They were white and they were men. And they were discriminated against on entry. They've now been given about £5,000. We've, we've done this before. We've had a chat about this before. About 160 people, I think it was. Um, they were accelerated ahead of where they should have been. And there were some men that didn't get in. There are still some men in my school here that haven't got in to the military. And, and their qualifications were far superior to mine. I speak to a lot of people on Twitter. One of the guys is Dennis Kavanagh. He's a good guy. He's, um, he's a lawyer. He's a gay man. He's a gay man, but he's an activist for, for gay men's rights. And he was here talking about Stonewall and the problems with Stonewall. And this was all, that last article we saw was all about uh, Stonewall telling the Air Force that they needed to get higher levels of diversity in. Now, I spoke to Dennis. I always speak to Dennis about this kind of stuff on here. And uh, I said to him, after he started talking about the problems uh, with uh, bringing biological men and women into the same wards and what, all that kind of stuff, I said, look, I warned the Royal Air Force about Stonewall. They didn't listen and eventually they had to pay out for discriminating against white men that were trying to join the Royal Air Force weren't able to. I think each white man got about £5,000 of your money. There's no government money. That's your taxpayer money that the Air Force have, well, in the big scheme of us throwing money out to Ukraine, it doesn't matter, does it? It's, it's ridiculous. And five grand doesn't matter when we're throwing billions out to, to Ukraine, which is just going in the back pockets of some very uh uh some some very crafty wheelie dealing, I, I believe. Allegedly, I'm saying. My lawyer would tell me to do that. But look, I cannot understand how these schemes persist. We have example after example that organisationally they represent a massive legal liability such as you've cited. And I did say that and I also said how they existed. Because when I was in the military, what happened is we recruited people with excessive progressive tendencies, liberal left-leaning tendencies, into what is a meritocratic, built on merit, how good you are means how further up the chain you go, oh, it should do, meritocratic organisations under weak leadership. That's another key point there, who are financially incentivized to look the other way. So if you didn't rock the boat, you got promoted. If you did speak out like I did, you never did. I'm not bitter about that, by the way. I got as far as I needed to get in the Royal Air Force, and I got out after 20 years. And also, I got out. When I got out of the Air Force, none of this stuff was going on. Uh, and then I got out a year or two later, BLM, all that stuff happened. So, you know, if I if it was in, I could have stayed, I would have done. It doesn't happen just in the military. It happens all over the place. Look, this is BT now, getting rid of a 1,000 jobs, jobs in Ipswich, I believe, which would be... I suppose the UK's indigenous white people and they're moving them into the cities in order in order to hire diversities to improve their own inclusive policies. To me it's ah it's disgusting. And the truth is there's nothing we can do about it. So everyone's laughing at us, of course, that's fine. There's nothing we can do about it. This is allowed. How is it allowed? And this is the issue we have. This is the Conservative Party having their conference and this is Suella Breverman here 
talking about if Keir Starmer became Prime Minister, the country would go woke with diversity, equity and inclusion. How much more can it go woke? It can't go any more woke than what it is right now. And this is this is it. The, the Conservative government have begun the task of clearing out this pernicious nonsense. They've had, I think, 12, maybe even 13 years now. You've got to get rid of them. You got to, It's too good for them to get rid of them, by the way. You need to almost keep them in there to make sure they do it. But they will lie their way. And I'm a Conservative man. This isn't a Conservative party. They will lie their way and tell you anything they possibly can just to get their own way. Don't trust these people people honestly don't it's a uni party we've got right now it doesn't matter whether it's labor in whether it's conservatives in whether it's a lib dem doesn't matter who it is the civil service are running all this and the civil service is full of little little mini marxists but look here's the major issues that we we really need to address complex systems won't survive the competence crisis we have a crisis of competence. I might sound a little bit intense right now, but I'm really genuinely concerned by this because I still have to use the mechanisms of the state to do what I need to be doing. I'll put it down in the description. But look, it's a very long article. It's really well written. I really like it. And I'm just going to scroll down to a bit that is quite important where we tell the difference and basically the whole article basically is what it's saying is look there are complex systems out there not complicated but complex and if we allow people who aren't good enough maybe we put them into positions because of their skin color let's just say or maybe even their gender we are going to run into problems because that's not how these systems were designed but how do we tell what the difference is between complex or complicated well in this article if we scroll down a little bit here it gives us some examples and this is the sort of thing that i really want you to understand before we go complex systems are ones that take some innovation or some thinking about a complicated system is maybe like a jigsaw puzzle or, or a model and it says here like fixing a car is complicated disrupting the automotive industry is complex now we can put people of whatever gender you want whatever I don't know, sexual orientation you want, whatever skin colour, race you want, it doesn't matter. We can put these people into complicated systems because they can follow set processes. Majority of people can. And that's the issue. We can put anyone in to run a complicated system. But things like air traffic, the military, the police service, any kind of elements of states, these aren't necessarily complicated systems. They're a bit worse than that. They're complex systems. And with that complexity, there's a heavy amount of nuance and people are struggling with that today. We have to be careful because of this. Let me know in the comments what you think, guys. But we cannot allow ourselves to be that stupid that we are going to throw anyone through a diversity policy into complex systems and expect to survive. I was thinking the other day, in fact, there's been a lot more aircraft accidents recently. I don't, and people writing to me, Tim, have you noticed the amount? I have noticed the amount. I'm like, but I can't really work out why. I'm not saying it's because we have necessarily put the wrong people in the cockpit. But what if you put the wrong people in the surrounding elements of it? Maybe maintenance, maybe air traffic. And maybe they're not doing necessarily anything wrong per se, but maybe their actions aren't as credible as they used to be. Maybe we're second guessing them as pilots. We're like, is that guy, have you done that? Or maybe we're finding errors and that builds up. And when you are flying airplanes, you, you're surrounded by this whole kind of head cloud of, of things are things going right are things going wrong if that is an issue then maybe that's why we're having a lot more aircraft accidents it's an interesting one guys i'm interested in your opinions in the comments i don't want to be doing diversity videos anymore especially ones that are this bloody long no one's going to watch it crying out loud appreciate it, tim davis for <laughs>